Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have a very exciting video. So I came up with this idea and it has not left my brain so we're gonna make a video out of it, okay? Today we're gonna be talking about some of my favorite authors of all time, romance authors of course, and my favorite book that they've written, which was very difficult. One of the authors, I literally could not just pick one. <laughs> so. These are 10 authors that I love and adore that I would label as my favorite authors of all time in the romance genre and my favorite book that they have written. This is like the best of the best. Like you could read any books by these authors, you'd be good to go. But if you wanna read the best of the best of these authors, you'd read these specific ones in this video. So the first one that I'm going to start with is of course, Grace Draven. I love her. She's a fantasy romance author. I feel like she's the fantasy romance queen. She is amazing at world building romance. Just I feel like a perfect blend of fantasy and romance. I think someone called it a romanticy. <laughs> um, I've heard that term before when it comes to fantasy romance, but like if you've never read a Grace Draven and you love fantasy romance, you are missing out. Everyone knows that my favorite romance book of all time is by this author. So it's Radiance, okay? This is amazing. Y'all have heard me talk about it so much. This is a romance between Ildiko and Brishan. Ildiko is kind of like a human woman or a gallery woman. That's what she's labeled as or her people are labeled as in this fantasy land. And then Brishan is Prince of the Kai. They're both kind of like spare heirs to their respective thrones. And so they've been put in an arranged marriage as an alliance. Now the Kai people and the human people don't really interact whatsoever. So it's kind of like a shock whenever the two of them have to get married um and they find each other not attractive when they first meet they are kind of repulsed by the other person but they form a friendship they form a bond and through them getting married and them getting to know each other they fall in love and oh my gosh this story is amazing and beautiful book two where is it it's this one ah is this one, this is another Ildiko and Brishan story, um, a continuation to this one, but this one is superior in my brain. But if you're more of a plot driven reader and like more politics, royalty aspects, this is what you're gonna want. This one is definitely a character driven book. I am a character driven reader. I could read 500 pages about them just eating dinner, honestly. <laughs> I love this one. And if you have not read it yet, you need to. I also feel like this is a great toe dip into fantasy romance. If that is not your genre. I feel like this is a great starter book. It was one of the first fantasy romances I ever read and it has stayed my favorite. Another author that everybody knows that I love and adore is Ruby Dixon. She is a alien romance author. She doesn't just write alien romances. She writes contemporary ones. She's written some bear shifters. She's written some motorcycle club. She has a whole entire fantasy romance series and um, I am in love with her writing. So this is the one author I could not choose just one book, okay? If we're gonna be talking about the Ice Planet Barbarian series, which is her most popular, um, it's basically a series where human women are abducted by Earth and then crash land on this ice planet and they end up finding mates with alien blue creatures on this planet. It's fantastic, okay? So my favorite in that series is book number 13, Barbarian's Redemption. People ask me if you can read this as a standalone. Please do not. I'm saying not to. You will not love it as much as you should if you don't read all the way from book one to get to this one. If you want to know how to read the Ice Planet Barbarian series in order, I have a guide to that down below. Um, but this one is totally worth the wait. This is about Beck and Ellie. We have a heroine in here who has a lot of trauma. She was abducted from Earth at a very young age and she has not spoken since. And so she gets put on this ice planet and Beck is apparently her mate. This is his redemption story, okay? So he was not everyone's fan favorite in some of the previous books, um, but I love his redemption story in here and how soft he becomes for Ellie because she does not need an alpha hero. She needs a sweet hero because of everything that she's gone through and it is so good. And then my favorite Ruby Dixon book that is not a part of the Ice Planet Barbarian series is When She Belongs. This is in her Rizdiverse series. This is one of the thickest books that I own by her. She's written bigger. Her fantasy romance books are ginormous. Um, but this one is definitely one of my favorite books of all time. This is the romance between Sophie and Jerok. So Sophie in here, you've met her in one of the previous books. You can probably read this one as a standalone if you want to. You might be a little lost with some characters because in one of the previous books, she ends up getting rescued from being a slave. And she's on this alien space pirate ship with all of these brothers. 
and they're like, hey, we want to go treasure hunting, but we don't want to put you in danger. So we're going to put you on this abandoned asteroid with our friend named Jurok. And you can just live with him until we find the treasure and then we'll pick you back up and you'll be safe again. She's like, uh, okay, I don't really have any other choice, but whatever. And so she's put on this abandoned asteroid with Jurok, who is a kind of like war veteran, an intergalactic war veteran. He has scars, prosthetic limbs, and he is very grumpy. This is a huge grumpy sunshine. And he is not too happy that these brothers have put Sophie on his asteroid. He's a big recluse and he just wants to be left alone to tinker with all of his inventions for the rest of his life, essentially. At the beginning, he's very grumpy towards Sophie and Sophie is very upset with him because of how rude he's being. But then he slowly starts to crumble his walls for her and it is so good. So good. If you love grumpy sunshine romances and alien romances, pick this one up. My next favorite author is Talia Hibbert. I love her so much. I am almost done with her backlist. I just have a few more books to read and she's just amazing. She is an author that I can always go to that has beautiful, amazing writing and is so diverse in everything that she writes. I feel like she always has a person of color in every single one of her books, as well as disability rep in almost every single one of her books. And as someone who has a disability, I love that. You rarely see that in books. And so Talia Hibbert is definitely a go-to for me. It's so hard to pick a favorite from her, but I think my favorite is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Like <laughs> I have read this book so many times. I've tabbed it a billion times. This is her first book in the Brown Sisters series. And I know this one isn't everybody else's favorite. This might be everybody's least favorite in the series compared to Danny and Eve. This one, however, just holds a special place in my heart. This was like the first book that I read that had chronic illness representation in here. Our heroine in here, Chloe, has fibromyalgia. She kind of has a near-death experience at the beginning of this book and decides to make a get a life list. One of those items on the list is to move out of her parents' house into her own apartment. When she moves to an apartment, she meets the superintendent of the building named Redford here, and they have an enemies to lovers romance. I just related to Chloe so hard, and this book has never left my brain ever. Um, the way that she talks about her fibromyalgia, which is a chronic illness very similar to mine, I just felt so seen and so heard. And Talia Hibbert herself has disabilities and chronic illnesses, and I believe she has fibromyalgia herself, so it's own voices rep, and I feel like she 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 writes it so well she writes it so phenomenally well and so i understand that this isn't everybody's favorite book because of maybe the storyline and everything um because they think that danny and eve are superior but chloe in my brain is superior because of how strong she is and everything that she goes through is very similar to what i've been through in my life and i just relate to her so hard but i know that i've said many times this isn't everybody's favorite book in the series but that doesn't mean it's not good a lot of people i know gave all three books in the series five stars but everyone has their preference of which one they love more so i love this one and i need more people to read this book and this series and this author in general look who decided to join us he was crying at the door i don't think i can talk about books and have you in my arms at the same time buddy so I might have to let you down even though I don't want to. Anyway, okay, the next author that we're gonna be talking about is Chloe Lise. Now I've only read her Bourbon Brothers series, but she's definitely one of my favorite authors. So my favorite book by her is Always Only You. This is another book with chronic illness representation. Our heroine Frankie here has autism and has rheumatoid arthritis. And I just love her so much. The chronic illness representation here is amazing. I love the whole discussion around it. Um, and so this is her romance with Ren. And Ren is a hockey player and Frankie is the social media manager for his hockey team. Um, and they have been kind of like pining over each other, Ren, for probably longer than Frankie. So this is definitely a hero falls first romance. But Frankie's house ends up getting broken into. All the windows and like locks are broken. And so Brian's like, how about you stay at my house until everything gets fixed? And so they're having to stay in the same house together while they're crushing on each other. And it is so stinking cute. I love this book so much. And it's probably a lot of people's favorites in the series too. Uh, my favorites besides this one is book four. Ren Bergman is one of my favorite heroes of all time of all time men there's not a lot of men watching my videos but if a man is watching this video and you want to know how to get a girl be ren bergman okay my next favorite author is britney c cherry i love i love her <laughs> i love her so much i have almost read all of her backlist <laughs> and she's just an author that i can go back to time and time again and 
have my heart broken but then also put back together she definitely writes emotional hard-hitting romances that definitely put you in your feels and then slowly piece by piece will glue your heart back together and make you believe in love again so my favorite book by her is definitely the silent waters i love this one so much and i ended up showing my love for this in a tiktok about a year or two ago i don't remember i think it was a year ago and it kind of blew up and i'm so grateful that i did because Brittany and I talk now, <laughs> like we talk on Instagram and it's wild to me. She's just amazing. I love her. She's an amazing woman and an amazing author. Um, so I have this one, but then she also sent me the alternative version. She sent me all four of these uh, editions and she had them um, dedicated and signed to me and I am so eternally grateful. So I have two versions of this one now. I love both. Both of them are beautiful to me, honestly. Um, but I'm just gonna hold up this one for now. But Brittany C. Sherry is amazing. This is her third book in her Elements series. Every single one of the books is a standalone. The only similar part in here is that the title has something to do with an element. Like literally they don't take place in the same town. There's no same people, no overlapping people. Like they are complete standalone. So yes, you can read this book on its own if you'd like. This is the romance between Maggie and Brooks. So Maggie at the beginning of this book is a little girl and she and her father end up moving home. So he ends up getting remarried to this woman and she has two kids herself. And so Maggie ends up meeting her new siblings as well as her brother's best friend named Brooks. So this is a brother's best friend romance. And right when she sees him, she's like, I'm gonna marry you. And he's like, ew, no, gross, cooties. What are you talking about? She's like, no, we're gonna get married. I'm gonna go plan our wedding in the woods. And so she goes to do just that. And then she ends up witnessing something she should not have seen. And it kind of sparks her not to speak anymore. So she hasn't spoken since she was a little girl and she's, I wanna say in her 20s, early 20s at the later half of this book, cause this kind of like takes place in time periods. And her and Brooks are now really close friends and they have been pining over each other for quite a while. And this book is just beautiful. The way that this book plays out is gorgeous. Maggie and Brooks are one of my favorite couples of all time. It's one of the most epic romances I've ever read is the romance between Maggie and Brooks in here. I just adore it. I wanna mention two historical authors really fast because I do love historical romances. I have a bunch of historical romance authors. I just chose two for this video. If y'all want me to make a part two with more authors, let me know in the comments. But one that I wanna mention is Tessa Dare. I love Tessa Dare. I think she was like my first toe dip into historicals and I have read almost every single one of her books. I love her and her writing. It's so easily consumable when you're first getting into historicals because reading a historical can be quite daunting if you've never read one before. The writing might be different because of the time period and every, where everything is set in, but I feel like Tessa Dare does an amazing job at introducing people into the genre. So my favorite one by her probably, I don't know, it might be, I, I don't have a definitive answer, but we're just gonna go with one, okay? We're gonna go with The Wallflower Wager. This is her third book in the Girl Meets Duke series. And yes, you have to read this series in order. This is about Penelope and Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel is kind of like revamping houses and selling them for a higher profit to make some money. And he ends up buying one right next to, the, to Penelope's estate, who is a lady. And, um, but he's in for a wild ride when he realizes that Penelope's not an ordinary lady. She actually, it's kind of like, I don't wanna say a vet, but she's kind of like a sanctuary. There you go, a sanctuary for injured, abandoned animals. And so she has a bunch of pets in her house. She has like an otter, she has a goat, she has many cats. He has to help her find homes for all of these animals so that people will be interested in buying his house because no one's gonna wanna buy a house that lives right next to a goat, you know? Um, so they go on an adventure together to find homes for all these pets and it is so stinking cute. And then I also, of course, love Lisa Kleypas like many other historical readers do. I have read quite a few of her books and I haven't even made a dent in her backlist, honestly, because there are so many books that she's written. Okay, so my favorite one by her is Devil in Spring, which is the third book in the Ravenel series. I've read all the Ravenels, all of the Hathaways, and all of the Wallflowers, which are her three main series, I want to say. And so this one just has not left my brain ever. We have another Gabriel character, like the previous book I talked about. So you have Gabriel in here, who's actually the son to one of the couples in the Wallflower series. Yes, the Wallflower series. And so you could read these in order, like you could read the Wallflowers before the Ravenels, but I just read this one first. I was fine. Um, but anyway, he is the son to one of the couples from the Wallflower series. And then Pandora is one of the Ravenels. 
and um she has sworn that she never really wants to get married like that's not really her life her twin sister does and she's like good for you I'm fine living by myself, a spinster life and creating board games for the rest of my life. Like that sounds amazing to me. She is very upset when she gets in a compromising position with Gabriel at a ball. Her skirt ends up getting stuck in like a settee when she's in like a room by herself at this house party. And Gabriel like walks by and notices that she needs help and helps her out. But then he ends up getting stuck too when people walk by the room and see them and they're stuck in a compromising position. And Gabriel's like, well, crap, I have to marry you now to save your reputation. She's like, I do not care about my reputation, sir. You can go. It's fine. I don't care. Um, and he's like, no, it's my duty to like marry you now. And she's like, you don't need to. And so it's about him trying to convince Pandora to marry him throughout the whole book. And I love it. This book is filled with hilarity and love and emotion like i adore this we also have a character as a disability pandora is hard of hearing i think she's hard of hearing only in one ear she often experiences vertigo because that balance is set off and so people label her as clumsy when in actuality she has balance issues because of her hearing loss and uh, so she becomes very vulnerable with gabriel about what happened to her and everything that's followed because of it and it was so beautiful i love both of these characters and this romance has just stuck in my brain. I of course want to mention really fast um the Queen Sarah J Mass because I do love her books okay they are so fun to escape into I I love them like like I will literally be waiting at midnight for every single release of one of her books ever since I got introduced to her book when only a core of uh Thorns and Roses was out only a quarter of and roses was out. Then I binged all the books that were out in the Ronald Glass series and then anxiously, anxiously waited every single other release. And this was, I want to say my sophomore year of high school. So it's been quite a long time since I've been a big fan of hers. So say what you will about her writing style. It is easily readable to me and will suck me in. I love it. Of course, my favorite by her is A Court of Mist and Fury. This is book two in her Akatar trilogy. And it is amazing. I can't go into this one because it would be a major spoiler, but this is just an epic fantasy romance series that I love. It will be an all-time favorite of me, and I feel like will be a classic for the romance, new adult, new adult romance genre. I was about to say YA. I'm like, this is definitely not YA. <laughs> um, but the new adult romance genre, let's just say that. Another favorite author of mine is Colleen Hoover. Um, I kind of died down on reading her books um, because I think I read one of them and it completely wrecked me. I read um, All Your Perfects and it like wrecked me. That book wrecked me. If you want your heart to break in a billion pieces, like read All Your Perfects because that one, yeah. Anyway, I haven't really read any of her releases since that point uh, because I think I'm scared. <laughs> but I've read quite a few from hers and I do label her as one of my favorite authors. So. My favorite by her is, of course, probably everyone's favorite, It Ends With Us. I love this book so much, and the second book is going to be coming out very soon. I don't want to go too deep into this because I feel like anything that I say could be a spoiler, but this is about our heroine named Lily, who gets in this relationship with a, name, um, with a man named Ryder, but then her past love named Atlas shows up in the picture. So that's what I'm going to say um because you need to go into this book blind i love this one and then the last author that i want to mention really fast is tiffany roberts this is actually a husband wife author duo so tiffany and robert um i've actually been on a live show with them which was surreal on jen from the book refuge channel so thank you so much jen for asking me to do that with you my favorite book by them i've read a few i need to read even more their backlist is very large um but my favorite one is probably ensnared um this is one of my newest additions to my collection it is signed by them i love it this is their spider romance okay now i get that people are scared of spiders i understand but this is different i'm scared of spiders i'm terrified and this was so hot this was so hot so this is a spider alien romance katon is like a spider alien creature he's really large and kind of looks like a spider but he also has hands and other stuff to make him compatible with a human person so he ends up finding this spaceship on his planet and there is ivy in cryo sleep he ends up waking her up and bringing her back to his nest as a pet and then realizes this woman is not a pet and then he's falling in love with her i love this katon and ivy forever and ever i love them this is actually a trilogy and i have yet to read book two and book three i know i don't know why i haven't picked them up yet it's just i know but i've read their fantasy romance series um with like there's like an island, like a prison island where magical creatures who have done wrong get put on this island where there's no magic allowed. So kind of like stripped of their magic. I've read a few books in that series. I've also read a few in their um, Treasure of the Abyss series. Um, so like their 
Kraken ones. And then I've also read Dust Walker, um, which is our cyborg one, post-apocalyptic cyborg one. I really like that one. And then I've also read oop, this one, which is claimed by an alien warrior, which is an alien romance that takes place on Earth because our hero was captured by some humans from the government he escapes and then he finds this woman in her car and kidnaps her and tells her to take him to his spaceship um so i feel like i'm just talking about them at this point instead of they're my favorite book but i've read a lot by them but i need to finally finish like their series because i've read quite a few of their books but all of them were the first book in the series and i haven't finished any of the series <laughs> so i need to finish the series but there you have it those are 10 of my favorite authors and my favorite book by said authors if you want a part two to this video please let me know and if you want to make a video like this let me know because i would totally watch it i want to watch other people talk about their favorite authors and their favorite books about their favorite authors let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to or if these are also your favorite romances let me know and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a spider emoji in the comment section down below if you're scared of spiders leave me even a spider emoji you can leave me a bug emoji i don't care um but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.